Hi, my name is Shalom Valchak. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Outsmartly. A little bit about me. In 2001, I joined my family's dietary supplement company, and we began marketing our products through Google AdWords. Over the next few years, our annual advertising budget grew to almost a million dollars, and I continued building and managing our e-commerce business for about 10 years after that, until we finally sold the company. Since then, I've been investing into e-commerce related technologies, and that journey eventually led to co-founding Outsmartly. Today, I'll be talking about Jamstack solutions for performant A-B testing and personalization. In particular, I'll be exploring ways to go beyond static site generation while maintaining a Jamstack architecture. But before I get into that, I'm going to tell a short story from the time of working in my family's company. For the first couple of years that we were selling online, sales grew pretty naturally. But after a few years, it became hard to know what changes worked and which did not, and also hard to know if we should be spending more or less on advertising. In 2008, we decided to rebuild our website completely. We hired two engineers, a designer, a writer, a couple of marketers, and 12 months and $900,000 later, we launched the site with an A-B test and it completely flatlined. The following year, sales declined 15%, and that experience has stuck with me ever since. And what I've taken away from that is that it's one thing to become successful online, and it's another to optimize that success. And this is a huge opportunity for many e-commerce sites. When we look at the most successful sites like Amazon, Google, and Netflix, we find that they share three things in common to go about this optimization, and that's A-B testing, personalization, and performance. Probably the single biggest feature that has drawn me to the Jamstack is the promise of phenomenal performance, and so I'm going to start with performance. Quite simply, performance matters, and I'm going to start by talking about Google, as they have been a long-time thought leader in the field of performance. One example is this next slide from a 2009 Google study. It shows data from an experiment where they artificially delayed the response times for search results by 200 and 400 milliseconds. Over the course of the experiment, they saw decreases in both the frequency of searches and the number of searches, and even more interestingly, as they removed the delay, it took a number of weeks to return to the prior levels of user engagement. And for me, this suggests that performance not only impacts the immediate customer experience, but it goes further and also affects long-term brand loyalty. Google has been very vocal in making the case that performance directly impacts revenue and has made efforts to estimate this impact for any website. This is a performance tool from Google that estimates how much incremental revenue a site could be making by improving load times. I gathered data from this tool and generated this next chart. Here we see the correlation between load time and revenue going from 10 seconds to one second in 500 millisecond increments. The first time I looked at this data, I was a bit shocked to see that the data suggests the value of 500 milliseconds is actually increasing as a site becomes faster. The big bubbles on this chart each mark a three second improvement in load time. Yet we can see that as the site becomes faster, this value increases. So going from 10 seconds to seven seconds is not nearly as valuable as going from four seconds to one second. I've got a couple more slides here from data that we gathered ourselves during an A-B test that we ran for a Shopify Plus store migrating to a Jamstack front end. This is a histogram of the largest contentful paint between the Jamstack site and the Shopify rendered version. While the Jamstack site is clearly faster, it's also much more consistent as we can see in the long tail of slow loading times for the Shopify rendered version. So what was the revenue impact for this site? We saw a 21, 20, sorry, we saw a 28% increase in the mobile conversion rate from Facebook ads, which for this particular store equates to a projected revenue gain of more than a million dollars annually. And if you remember back to the prior slide talking about Google data suggesting that as a site goes faster, every millisecond becomes more valuable. The takeaway here is that as we invest in performance, it becomes increasingly important to keep our site fast. It's one thing to build a fast site, 
and another thing to keep it fast. When we look at the needs of e-commerce, purely static sites are often not enough, yet static sites deployed to a CDN are really the gold standard for performance. Businesses need to deliver personalization and they need to run A-B testing, and this is really the foundation for optimizing and continuing to grow. The problem is that while performance matters, A-B testing and personalization are slow. Today, there are two established ways of doing A-B testing and personalization. This is client-side or at an origin server. And I'm going to take a little time to look at what makes both of these slow and to make an effort at estimating the potential revenue impact, as well as diving into some of the technical details that make up these delays. So first off is client-side A-B testing and personalization. And this is usually accomplished by an SDK that often completely blocks the DOM from rendering and on mobile devices, that could cost from hundreds of milliseconds to a number of seconds. And using Google's data, that could be a revenue loss of as much as 10% just from installing the third-party script. If we unpack this delay, it breaks down as having to do a DNS lookup for the third-party domain, another SSL negotiation, we have to download the JavaScript, and finally, the device has to parse and execute the script. And on lower end mobile devices, this can take a significant amount of time. The other option is to use a server side SDK. However, these require returning to the origin server for every request. And the further a visitor is from that server, the more latency is added. Not to mention that the Jamstack doesn't really have servers. And it's not just one round trip, but it's multiple round trips. And this breaks down to TCP connection, the SSL negotiation, and finally being able to actually request the content. That could be as many as eight times back and forth across the country just to get the first byte. But how much latency does this add? So going from Virginia to New York could be 50 milliseconds of delay and almost 300 milliseconds going from Virginia to Seattle, not to mention going cross-continental. And looking back to Google's performance calculator, we can estimate the revenue impact of this added latency. So from Virginia to Seattle, that could be a revenue loss of more than 1.5%. And remember, the faster your site is, the bigger that impact, because the faster you are, the more valuable each millisecond becomes. So is there a performant way? The dream for performance would be doing these dynamic modifications at the CDN layer within the CDN's cache itself. And that is in fact possible today with the emergence of edge compute. We see this offered by Netlify edge handlers, Cloudflare workers, Akamai edge workers, and a number of others. And on this foundational compute layer, we can build a new architecture. And what does this architecture look like? So fundamentally, it has three, three pieces. The first is caching a default page within the CDN, and then on a per request basis, running whatever logic is needed and making modifications directly to the cached HTML. This could be using geographic information, cookies, query parameters, A-B testing logic, and much more. And then finally, assuring the application hydrates properly client-side and continues to work with client-side navigation. So how fast is this? Let's look at a little demo of what we've been working on. So this is a statically rendered site um, using Gatsby that's been deployed to Netlify. And I'll just clear this site data here and open up the network tab. And we can see that the response times for this cached statically rendered site are between 40, 50, 60 milliseconds. Now, if I remove this default true and refresh, we see that the site has now personalized. It knows what city I'm in. It knows that I'm visiting from a desktop. And if we rush again, it knows that I'm returning to the site. And we can see that we're still in that same very fast response time as our statically cached page. And if we look at the HTML returned, we can see that this headline is in the HTML that was returned from the CDN. Now, this has been a very short 10 minute intro. There's a lot of stuff that could be said. And this is the sort of stuff we are working on at OutSmartly. If this is interesting, feel free to reach out to us. If you end up doing or using this technique, we'd love to see it. We're also sponsoring this summit. So feel free to come say hi at our booth. 
Thanks for your time.